I'm Adi Klimovitz, and it's a real honor to be here. Um, this is actually the first time I've spoken in front of actuaries. <laughs> so, um, I've spent about 10 years interacting with actuaries, more so on the telephone. So, um, hopefully I look uh, like what I sound like on the phone. And uh, it's been nice to meet everybody in person as well. We'll start anyway. We have a business called Virtual Actuary, which is an actuary consulting business. And um, what we've tried to do is we've tried to create a turnkey solution. Uh, if you think about uh, some of the other consultancies, they have uh, life insurance teams, they have general insurance teams, banking, pensions, investments. Okay. So what we've tried to do is we've tried to recreate that and have a full turnkey solution. Uh, you know, we would want to go to market and hope that if one of the clients needs an actuary that we have the, uh, the actuaries that have the ability to do the work. As you can imagine, there's a lot of complexities with that. You've got the different levels. You've got the more senior actuaries that do the sign-off. And uh, you've got the, the more junior staff that do some of the more uh, groundwork and legwork. So trying to have that balance is tricky. You can't have too many juniors without the seniors, otherwise you don't have a full solution. So um, what we've done is we've, we uh, started the business in 2017. By September 2018, which is only about six, seven months later, we were able to uh, actually start going to market. We had about 20 actuaries at that stage, uh, spread across the different teams. By October, November, December 2017, we went to market. We, we actually started um, mentioning that we would like to take on some work, and by January, oh, thanks. By January 2018, we, we picked up uh, our first client. So we're now about one year in, <laughs> and um, we've picked up about 36 clients over the last year, which in my opinion is not bad. The first year is really about traction, really just about onboarding, uh, a lot of paperwork, um, and um, uh, can I make it full screen? Um, I'm not sure how to. And uh, so in our first year, we, we, we did quite a we hit about 13 million rand in revenue, so that's where we're at at the moment. So, uh, are we a success? It depends on uh, the success criteria. It depends on, um, on who we're getting um, compared to. But I think it was, a, it was a good first year. So, okay. So that was pretty much what I just discussed for the last couple of years. It gives a little bit of a mind map into those are not actually the actuaries, but um, we, we try to find uh, some pictures that look very similar. <laughs> and uh, so as you can see, we've got a, a life team, a general insurance team, banking, healthcare, pensions, and investments. The pensions team is taking a while to get going. <laughs> Finding the right uh, evaluator hasn't happened just yet, but it will eventually get off the ground. Okay. So my background was that I spent about 10 years working as a recruiter, so I'd like to believe that uh, this really enables um, the team to scale. I think that um, this particular talk is really about the strategy of uh, going to market with a business like this. And in my opinion, this entire business is about building teams of actuaries. It's very, very difficult. It can take you months. If you've ever tried to actually hire actuaries, uh, it can take you months. To, to find the right one, and that's if they actually accept at the end of the process. You know, you could really, uh, you know, find yourself eight, ten months down the line and you've stagnated. So actually getting that flow going and, uh, and moving forward on projects that you want to action, uh, I think takes uh, somebody with my kind of background. I form part of the uh, support team. <laughs> So I don't do the work, obviously, but uh, I'm there to empower the actuaries and, and as the projects kick off, to be able to make sure that they have the right teams, 
at the right levels. The lean mindset, well, this is really our entire business. And um, I, I think for most of you, your businesses are chunky and well established with uh, office space and uh, a lot of um, uh, years of establishment. Ours is a lean business, so we're just getting started. So what do I mean by lean business? Well, we don't have office space. Um, we outsource our accounting department, we outsource our design department, we try to outsource as much as possible. Uh, what we don't want to do is have too many expenses, because expenses is burn rate. Now, I didn't even know what burn rate actually meant, but what it means is that you're burning money, and, and that's a bad thing, because if we're burning money, then somebody has to pay for that. And I guess we're in the business of, of making money and having a good time as well. But, you know, we need clients and those clients have to pay for what we do, in essence. So if we're burning money, then our clients are burning money. So the lean mindset is really about being nimble and uh, being able to translate that nimbleness to our clients, who I think uh, when they eventually get our invoices, they'll most probably appreciate it and hopefully they'll want to utilize us uh, on an ongoing basis. <laughs> so this is what it means to be nimble. We could talk about it for quite a while, but I'll move on. There's quite a few slides. So what we did is we tried to create a, a system where uh, the independent actuaries that work with us want to work with us. Uh, why would an independent not want to work alone? In my opinion, because scaling their ability and their skill set is not so simple. You know, if you're, if you're one actuary or two actuaries, there's only so much work you can actually do as a consulting actuary. So what we've done is we've created a system which is the virtual actuary system. It's a peer review nurturing system. So what this means is that our business only takes a very small portion of what the clients pay. So that leaves the significant uh, portion, the significant portion of the business, uh, the, sorry, the significant portion of the money goes to the actuaries. And so what happens is of the money that's actually left over, that allows the senior actuaries to filter that money down to their teams. So they will be able to, in essence, some of the senior actuaries can take 60%, 50%, 70% of the 80 to or 90% and filter that down to their teams. That allows them to work on more clients, on more projects, and to be able to scale themselves so that they can take on more work. That's a virtual actuary system, in my opinion. It's not a perfect system, but I think it should enable us to be able to have the senior actuaries making more money and use their skill set across more clients. So that's kind of how it works. So we'll, we'll see how it plays itself out, but we had to create some sort of a system to, to be able to scale the business and the skill sets. It seems to have just changed a little bit, um, so we'll just move on anyway. Our business is definitely not a brokerage business in that we don't just have clients and we palm off those clients to the actuaries and everybody deals with themselves and, and we don't get involved. What we try to do as a, as a company is, is work as a team and as a full-scale business. So what that means is that the company is involved in the entire process from the contracts to the interacting with the clients to the first meeting to being able to do the engagement letter, to dealing with the contracts, so that in essence we actually work as a team. Because if we're working as a team, then we're a business. What we don't want to be, thanks. What we don't want to be are, a t are, are fragmented actuaries that are dealing with the world all by themselves. You know, we're we're a, we're a team, and so. You know, in order to, to do that, we have to take full responsibility of being involved in the entire process. So as you can see over here, this is what we do. You know, it's, it's not a, 
some, some have mentioned the uber of actuaries, but it's kind of like you're dealing with the, the main mothership itself. Not so much dealing with the driver and then not dealing with the main company. So that's kind of what we've tried to create, is a, a full wholesome team that uh, interacts with the clients together. Together is the great word. The ultimate challenge of building a global team of actuaries. And so, in our first year, we were able to gain some traction and pick up some clients. But at the same time, in order to go into different territories like uh, the US and uh, Europe and Asia and Australia, there's a lot of things to take into consideration, but ultimately it's kind of the same principles that I mentioned before. You're looking at senior actuaries that have sign-off, uh, actuaries that have in-country regulatory knowledge, experience and the ability to sign stuff off. And so really what we're doing is we are making sure that the territories that we go into we have actuaries that are based there, that know the country. How we pick up the clients is a whole other story, but it's really about building the teams of actuaries. How we'll pick up the clients, I'll go more into our go-to-market strategy. But um, it's really about having in-country actuaries that are able to filter that work through to our South African teams of actuaries. That's really what it's about. It's, if, we do, if we work as a team, we should be able to handle those clients in a responsible way. I mean, for those that are sitting in front of me, there's a lot of uh, people that have a lot of responsibility on their plates. And you're not going to outsource any of your work at all, unless you're 100% confident that the teams that are dealing with your responsibility are competent. So, for, from what I've seen, and potentially some might agree with me, is that <clears throat> really, what is the mindset of those that we're interacting with? And I'm, I'm kind of like preaching to the choir. <laughs> but uh, the mindset of an actuary, not many people understand that. So I'll try and give my take. Here you've got professionals that were overachievers in primary school and high school. In most cases, head boy and head girl. Um, extracurriculum activities at levels that most people couldn't keep up with. They went into university, did possibly one of the most difficult degrees, <laughs> and could very easily have gone into medicine, engineering, pretty much anything. But because actuaries are, love problem solving, in essence, they felt an attraction towards actuarial science. So as I say, the actuaries could have done anything, but they became actuaries. And so where are we now, 20 years down the line, 25 years down the line, looking with an established industry, globally, is these people that were overachievers who could have spent their time with white jackets on, working in comfort, are now driving in traffic, and working in sardine can offices. This is what it's come to. So my take is that that's wrong. You might not agree with me, but that's my take. And that's actually virtual actuaries take. So what we want to do is take the actuaries and allow them to work in comfort so that they can actually be their best. So as a lean business, what we've tried to do is we've tried to avoid the old I need my consultant to come and see me. Please come to my office so that we can have a boardroom meeting. It's very necessary, but it can also be a waste of time. So what we've tried to do is integrate technology into the way that we interact with our clients. Some tough customers, but I assure you, if you've ever done a Zoom chat in the, at the comfort of your desk with maybe your shoes off, it's actually really nice. The transfer of information is identical. We can share screens. I'm not saying it's the only program that one has to use. Skype works when it wants to work. We use Zoom. It works better, in my opinion. We also use 
Slack to be able to interact as a team. If you don't know what Slack is, it's kind of like a WhatsApp group chat. You have the different rooms on the side, you've got your main window in the middle. It allows us to interact with programmers overseas on the InsureTech stuff that we're working on. It's kind of like our water cooler type vibe. And so we use technology to be a new type of business. We also use Amazon Web Services. We also use Azure. So there's a lot to go into that. But ultimately, we use technology because technology is better, in my opinion. As you can see over here, some smiling faces. <laughs> this is what a Zoom chat looks like with uh, a team uh, talking about very important stuff. Uh, you know, but we do it with a smile on our faces, and uh, and this is it. You know, this is the future. This is our Slack environment. I mean, look how efficient that looks. You know, you've got the rooms on the left, you've got uh, the main body in the middle. It's it's in your pocket, and uh, we use technology. All right. So this is an actual quote from this guy Damon, who is uh, <coughs> a thought leader. And uh, his opinion is that uh, everything is going virtual. It's actually the reason we called our business virtual, not because of um, Damon, but what we're aiming for is actuaries consulting from home in virtual and augmented reality into a global market. This is why we call the business virtual actuary. It also means that we interact with our clients more digitally, so that's one of the reasons, but it's our 10-year plan of, of, of how, what we're moving towards. So we've also partnered up with a, a very big hardware and software uh, business in the US, not in SureTech Global, but another one, quite a big one, and we're gonna develop virtual and augmented hardware and software environments with them. So this is something that we'll develop, this is what we're moving towards. Okay, so you don't have to only take mine and Damon's opinion. Let's see. Let's see who else is saying what about virtual reality. Hopefully, put that in. What industry is on the verge of exploding? Virtual reality. And let me say this, Larry, because I think you're going to get a kick out of this. Because if you think emojis is crazy, let me tell you what I'm about to tell you. Twelve years from today, when we're doing this interview, as we're going to have a long relationship, as you said. We're going to be doing it. It's going to feel like it's happening just like right now, except one thing. We're both going to be sitting at home. Uh, how, about, <laughs> how about an industry that's slowing down or dying? Uh, going to market. This is our go-to-market strategy. Um, so the go-to-market strategy was in, initially, our go-to-market strategy was to have a group of actuaries that could do the work. That was the first thing. Thank you so much. Um, the second thing was to actually market the business. And uh, from about October, November, December, when I mentioned that we went to market, so what does go to market actually mean? <laughs> Phoning uh, 388 senior actuaries <coughs> and mentioning to them that we have a business <laughs> and we'd like to pick up some work. I'd like to believe that there's probably quite a few actuaries here that got that phone call. And uh, what that meant was that by January 2018, we started picking up clients. So now one year later, 36 clients later, which is a go-to-market strategy in my opinion. Didn't cost us anything besides for uh, quite a lot of coffee <laughs> and, uh, and telephone bills which is not bad, all things considered. We didn't sponsor a rugby match or something like that. I don't know who played recently. I don't follow that, unfortunately. <clears throat> and, excuse me. Another go-to-market strategy is our online presence on LinkedIn. So what we've tried to do is we've tried to mention to the overseas clients that <clears throat> we have a business, our actuaries are competent, and we'd like to make ourselves available. Uh, to them and uh, as a result we've actually picked up clients in um, in the US as well as in London um, starting to move into potentially Australia thank you thank you so much and uh, and a couple of other countries so we pretty much use LinkedIn we've also used WhatsApp to be able to get our messages across 
So again, we've used technology. It's not your flyers on your car type strategy. Um, we've used Facebook as well, but mainly LinkedIn is quite a big one for us. And Instagram, Instagram is great. We're connected with the actuaries, we, we engage. So the go-to-market strategy is very, very difficult. It really is. Um, but we've tried to do it in a lean way. And, uh, and I think our year two is going to be, we're just gonna ramp that up. So normally you don't uh, pull out your phones <laughs> at a conference. In fact, this is my second conference ever. So if I seem a little bit uh, nervous up here on stage, uh, barring a couple of technical issues, it's because I don't do this that often. <laughs> so please pull out your phones and please uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. Please don't be shy. Uh, I'd like to connect with you. And uh, LinkedIn has been our um, shining star in being able to tell the world about us. It's not a social network, uh, more so a, a business a powerhouse in, uh, in launching uh, a consultancy. This is what some of the um, engagements and interactions on LinkedIn have been like. I'd like to believe that they're very positive. And uh, I think from, from some of the feedback, um, there's a lot of encouragement, there's a lot of support. Uh, I think people want us to succeed. <laughs> we want ourselves to succeed. And uh, this is what some people are saying about us. The juggling act. So. I'm actually going to move on because we've got a little bit more to do, but in essence, everything that I've said is really just about trying to juggle between teams of actuaries, the budget that we have to be able to, to do our expenses, interacting with potential investors. Our whole business is about one big juggling act. That's why this slide is here. It's not easy. Juggling technology, <laughs> that doesn't work so often. Um, insurance versus insure tech. So this is really what this is all about, is what is that going to be like? This was the story about some guys that climbed Kilimanjaro, and uh, what eventually happened was they got to the top of the mountain after years of planning, only to find a little boy up there. And they asked him, what are you doing up here? He said, I grew up on this mountain. How did you guys get here? So I'd like to believe that those that are forming insurtech businesses grew up in this technology age. It's a very scary thought because you've got teams of uh, people trying to work out how to do insure tech, they might be potentially not of the right um, era, potentially. Ah. So another thing that, uh, so my analogy of insurance being disrupted by insure tech is very similar to kite surfing disrupting windsurfing and this is a little video that i show windsurfing they didn't make a bigger board with a bigger sail they had to reinvent the whole process so hopefully the sound works it was really nice
These are some of our clients, we're very proud of them. As you can see, they, they, they no joke. Um, and uh, this is what we did in one year. So this is kind of what it's all about, is uh, pushing on, <laughs> making do. Uh, I think this is, I'm actually really grateful because uh, you need to push on in life. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we're now at the end. I'm gonna just take the laptop, if I may, we'll plug it in over there. We'll play that last video. And uh, we, we have formed a joint venture with a company in the US called InsureTech Global. We've uh, assisted them in developing, in my opinion, one of the most advanced actuarial modeling softwares in the world. Uh, it, it, the speed is significant. And um, some have called uh, the software Stock IC uh, the, the windows uh, for actuaries. And uh, it's a full environment. And we're just about to launch it globally. In fact, we're just starting to roll it out at the moment. I'll just move this over there. And then uh, Joseph, who's the CEO of InsureTech Global, who's based in Dallas, he's a real pro. He really knows what he's doing. So he gives us a little five-minute demo of the software. And that will kind of uh, <laughs> conclude my, uh, my talk. I hope that it's been enlightening. Uh, it wasn't perfect, but that's okay. I, I think I'm happy with it. Thanks for having me. Hi, okay, we've got Joseph here in Dallas, the president and CEO of InsureTech Global. He's going to give us a nice demonstration of Stocker C, which is the most impressive actuarial modeling software we've seen. Go ahead, Joseph. Thank you, Adi. Uh, very exciting to uh, demonstrate the solution here. And uh, it is a completely cloud-based solution. I just want to point out that we just won the 2018 Finance Innovation Award in France that was attributed by the uh, French government and the uh, uh, European stock market. So we'll talk about that uh, another time. But the solution is organized by modules. We have administration, asset management, capital requirement, and so on and so forth. And a lot of um, a very uh, uh, advanced modules such as the uh, audit trail, 260 bit encryption, that's from the NSA standard, uh, a chat room such as uh, Skype and the ETL tools and so on and so forth. We have limited time, so I'm gonna get to the uh, heart of it. Uh, really, we're the fastest and most comprehensive uh, solution on the market. We took two and a half years to develop this solution. And I'm, what I'm gonna show you here is the stochastic modeling um, itself, which is the hardest thing so far uh, in the industry to do. Nobody in the industry is able to run stochastic modeling at, uh, at our speed. Basically, it takes hours, days, or I would say uh, impossible with the five million scenarios that we're about to run. And keep in mind that we're doing that only uh, with um, a couple couple of CPUs. So the pricing itself is extremely competitive compared to the rest of the market. Uh, in terms of technology, we're leveraging many different technology modeling can be done in C++ with GPU, C Sharp, R Studio, Excel, vast array. We have economic scenario generators. Um, like I said, uh, there is also an embedded uh, uh, charting, uh, just a whole array of tool. And uh, the reason we won was one for the stochastic modeling, but also because of the breadth of the solution and how extensive the solution is. So there's absolutely everything you can think about in terms of, uh, of an actuarial platform compared to uh, anybody or any, anyone um, out there on the market. So um, we're using here a 5 million, pol um, 5 million policies or model point, 25,000 scenarios. The contract duration is 30 years. The monthly frequency uh, is done until a uh, contract matur maturity. We're using an RNG to simulate the 25,000 economic scenarios and five asset class and using a geometric Brownian stochastic movement process 
uh, and very important also, each of the 25,000 scenarios is done for each of the policies. So it's really a ginormous calculation that we've just done here in about a minute 10, 70 seconds. So it gives you a kind of an idea of the power of the solution. Obviously, it'll be too long to go over the solution, but I'll give you a taste for it. Thank you very much. Uh, if you'd like a full solution, please don't hesitate. Talk to Addy and have a great conference there. Very impressive. And on the left, I uh, saw you had a whole bunch of different modules. Can you just quickly take us through those as well? Oh, yeah. We have the administration where you can organize pretty much everything from the companies to the, uh, the user rights to user management console. You can do the batch, ALM, anything can be done also under RStudio, market, consistent embedded value, stochastic modeling, every type of tools for capital requirements that we have here. And also we have an actual calculator where you can compare that to a TI calculator, but for actuaries, um, uh, model generators that are done automatically, audit trails, report and analytics, artificial intelligence, remote support, um, libraries, chat rooms, just as Skype, uh, extract, transform load, where you can directly just manipulate all your files without having to go out of the application and uh, many other tools. So uh, we can see over here, for example, you don't have to wait for your results. They're automatically, you have a bell that tells you when your results are done. There's so many modules. And uh, how do you manage all that? Well, we have something that tells you exactly what you have, where your rights are. Uh, what, uh, what are your rights and what you can access or not access, different type of environment. Uh, you can even turn on and off uh, some of the uh, um, acceleration server and that's how we keep it very low cost because you're only using the power when you need it. And we're leveraging different type of technologies, GPUs, CPUs, multi-threading. Very nice. Joseph, it's very impressive and I'm most uh, grateful that you've taken the time to show this to me. Uh, we've lost connection, but we're going to push on. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys.